Hello my beautiful ducks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I'm so sorry it has been a hot minute since the last time I uploaded a speed building video and to be honest I have no excuses. <laughs> no I'm kidding. Um, I do have a couple of excuses. <laughs> First and foremost, I just really have been struggling with Builder's Block. I spoke about this in one of my previous videos. And also, it's been a really busy last couple of months for me. So since like, I would say maybe the end of June, um, I had a family holiday where I went to the east coast of the UK. So every year we try to do a family caravan holiday and it was cancelled last year because of the pandemic but this year we were able to go and get together and that was super fun um, but it did mean that I was out um, of my little cocoon <laughs> for a week and when I got back it's been like like non-stop like I've been doing more stuff with family and friends uh, it was my birthday at the beginning of July so I turned 30 and that's not something I want to brag about <laughs> but things have been really hectic uh, but thankfully the social butterfly law has settled down and I've been finally able to get back into doing some building and what better way than start with this new pack, which is probably my favourite. I am in love with The Sims 4 Cottage Living. It is a gorgeous pack. The world is just beautiful. The build and buy objects are to die for. If you are a builder, then there is more than enough reasons for you to buy this pack. And if you're a gameplay, there's even more reasons to, to buy this pack. If you're into gameplay, that is, sorry. Um, I am just so excited for this build. It's one of my favourites I've done in quite some time. Um, so it is a two bedroom, one and a half bath house. And it is a kind of cottage. I mean, it's kind of on the cusp of a suburban home and a cottage, I feel. You'll have to let me know in the comments what you think this style of architecture is. I am hopeless with picking out architecture and noticing which kind of architecture that I'm using. So yeah, if you know that kind of stuff, then feel free to educate me. <laughs> but we are building in the brand new world that came with the new expansion pack, which is Henford on Bagley. And this is the Cordelia Cottage lot, which I believe the original uh, lot was designed by the EA game changer Thomas TV. I think that's his name. Um, and the original house was absolutely beautiful, like the cottage was gorgeous and I felt so bad like bulldozing it and starting my own build but hopefully I did the lot some justice. Um, if you do want to go ahead and download this build, it is on the gallery, you just need to search for my ID which is Law Simming and you'll have access to that build. Now, it's not pack restricted. I decided that as this is my first build with the new pack, I wasn't going to restrict myself to just using certain objects. I wanted a sort of free for all just to see what I could come up with. And yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think in the future, I'm probably going to try and release a uh, base game only plus cottage living or maybe a build that's base game cottage living and parenthood or cats and dogs because I feel like if you combine those packs they work really really well together so that's something to look forward to in the hopefully not so distant future we will see how I get on <laughs> but at the moment we are just working on the exterior of this build and you'll notice that it's really luscious, really green. I wanted to try and replicate a lot of the outside uh, landscaping, the world around this lot. It's absolutely gorgeous and I feel like, you know, this world is absolutely fabulous. The lighting is perfect and even without reshade, I mean, I'm currently using reshade, but when I first opened the game, I had no reshade on and it just looked absolutely stunning. So I feel like this is the first world that we have that even without reshade, you can get some spectacular screenshots. So 
that's another really awesome thing that I love about this world and this pack in general. So I'm using the debug fences here that came with the new pack. I was going to use the actual fencing that came with the pack, but it didn't really flow very well in my opinion. And I really like how the debug versions sort of vary in size, they vary in height. You've got rounded pieces as well, which I really love. And um, I just think it looked much better uh, rather than using the actual in-game fencing option. So this build has a cow shed, it also has a oversized crop area, so if you're sims who are um, big farmers or gardeners you'll be able to use the brand new planter types which came with this new pack and create some oversized pumpkins or mushrooms or aubergines or What's the last one? Lettuce? I think it's lettuce. <laughs> so this build is, well, the majority of this landscape is terrain paint. And I mean, I'm not really one for terrain painting. I'm actually, uh, I'm really nervous when it comes to using terrain paint because I feel like it doesn't end up looking very realistic normally. But with this garden, I think I nailed it. You'll have to let me know in the comment section what you think, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks realistic. And I really enjoy how I took the path that came with Get Together and just using the combination of the stone and then the two versions that, that the grass is coming through, you can make it look really worn and faded. And that's kind of my idea for this build. I wanted it to be very rustic, very family orientated, very um, like well kept but not well kept if that makes sense. Like I, I want the family that live here to love their home and to love their garden but at the same time it's an old house so there's only so much you can keep spick and span, you know? So I'm really happy with how it turned out anyway and um, this is also very strange for me because usually I create the shell of the house. I might do a little bit of landscaping. For example, I might put some fencing in. I might put some flower arrangements in the front of the house, but then I immediately go to the interior of the build and then finish up with the landscaping at the end. But because I am so in love with all of the landscaping objects that we got with this new pack, I just had to do the exterior first. And of course I had to make use of the new animal sheds that came with this pack. I love the animation and the gameplay that the cows and the chicken coops have. It's absolutely adorable, um, especially with children sims and like toddler sims. Like it's just adorable seeing the toddlers like squeeze the chickens. Oh, my heart every time I see that animation. <laughs> <laughs> so this build unfortunately does not have space for a chicken coop but I did manage to fit in the cow shed there and I didn't want to wall it off. I mean I didn't have much space to wall it off to be honest but I kind of like the idea that the cow just roams around the garden and like one minute your sims can be outside having a barbecue and eating their dinner and then the cow will like come up and start you know, begging for food or you know, <laughs> wanting to get in on the uh, on the conversation. <laughs> that was a really cool thought I had when I was building this house. And I spent a long time just going through the debug menu and trying to pull out all of the new debug decorational objects that came with this pack. There are so many and I didn't realize until I was sort of going through the debug menu and pulling out all the new objects, just how many there were. There's like so many little jars and like flower decorations. And I love those grass pieces, which came with the new pack as well. Like the lined grass, because for some reason it just works everywhere you put it. I'm in love. Anyway, we are now inside the build and I did cut the filming of the floor plan. Now, the main reason for that is that I struggled. And when I say I struggled, I mean it took me a disgusting amount of time to work out the floor plan for this build. I just couldn't get it to make sense and I mean usually I'm not that bad at floor planning but at the moment I'm really struggling with it. So if you guys have any like advice or tips that perhaps I could 
use going forward that would be so greatly appreciated please leave them in the comment section down below so i can check them all out because i need help guys like i need help <laughs> You'll see there that I hang that I hung two paintings on the wall there, which aren't in the game uh, catalog. Now those are from the gallery, so they're no CC artwork from the creator Sensational Two. I will have her name linked in the description box down below. So if you're looking for more artwork for the game, which is not flagged as CC, but um, more interesting than the game art then please do check her gallery uh, out because she's an amazing creator all of her artwork is no CC and there's such a range of styles in her gallery which I really love I feel like no matter what build I'm going for I can always find something in her gallery which will just look amazing on the walls and so yeah definitely go and check her out and here I'm just working on this very small little office nook that's right by the front door. I was going to originally create a separate room for the office, but I felt like that wasn't necessarily realistic in this build. I felt like the rooms that I had space for, so there's the separate kitchen, there is the separate dining, there's the living room and two bedrooms upstairs along with a bathroom upstairs and then a half bath on the downstairs. And basically I didn't want to give up a bedroom for an office and I didn't want to give up the downstairs bathroom as an office so I felt like this was probably the best way to give them the desk space and the computer. And my reasoning for having it by the front door was kind of a really good space filler for that area anyway. But also I kind of felt like it was just somewhere quite um, in the local family area so that if the children sims were working on their homework or playing online video games, then the parents could be like checking in on them, making sure they're safe. Because that's obviously a big issue in today's society, making sure that your children are safe when they're uh, searching on the internet, so browsing on the internet. So I felt like that was really realistic for my gameplay and I also really like the little area. I feel like it's cozy and it's a really great space filler. Now we're working on the kitchen and again, I cut quite a bit of figuring out the kitchen layout as well. I struggled immensely with this kitchen because it's quite small, I feel. Um, usually in cottages, I would say that the kitchen spaces are usually quite big. Um, my auntie lives in a cottage down in the Kent countryside and her kitchen is blooming huge. <laughs> Honestly, it's massive. And like, I felt like I couldn't really make this kitchen any bigger without compromising the already made shell of the house and I was really happy with how everything looked on the outside so I didn't want to change the structure so I had to make it work. And you'll see there that I have put a washing machine in the kitchen. Now those of you who live in the UK will get this so in our kitchens we have a washing machine usually and sometimes a dryer as well depending on how rich you are I suppose <laughs> but in the UK kitchens definitely have the washing machine so I definitely wanted to put that in this build and make it as quintessentially British as I possibly could so that's something that I rarely do in my builds so that was fun to uh, to do that and also I'm just doing this quick little trick with the stove there so I was browsing on Facebook and I saw that Krill Sims 3 or is it Krill Sims 4? I'm not entirely sure what he's going by these days but he posted a render on Facebook of Bella Goth in her kitchen and she's like in the middle of preparing food and the original picture before he put Bella Goth into it um, was this picture of a stove with a pot and a spoon poking out of it and I loved that idea so much and I knew that I could recreate it using the tool mod so I just had to give that a go and I love how it turned out. It looks so awesome and when my sim was in the kitchen and I was taking the screenshots that you will see at the end of this build, it just looked so realistic like your sim is actually cooking something which if you've seen any of my previous speed builds you will know that I love to create 
detailed, cluttered kitchens, really realistic kitchens, and I love creating these little scenes that look like your sim is in the middle of cooking dinner or preparing a meal or just doing something that adds a bit of life to the rooms. I feel like that's kind of the thing that, that make screenshots, especially on like Instagram and stuff, is if it looks really super realistic, then you know, that's awesome. And also for gameplay as well, like it's super fun to come into a kitchen and see, you know, a house where people actually live rather than, you know, a showroom as it were. So this kitchen is no exception. It's really cluttered. It's every counter space is filled except for one which your sim needs to be able to create their meals so it's completely functional i have moved a family into this build and i was playing with them and it's super fun and i'm just in love with this house i can't get over how much i love this pack and i love this house and for once i'm actually proud of something that i've created i mean if you guys know me you'll know that i really suffer with like self-appreciation and self-love so to have this feeling about a house that I've created or anything that I've created in this game is just super fun and hopefully this has sort of set me up to continue feeling this way, you know? Anyway, so back to the build. I jump around a lot when I'm recording this build and I'm going to tell you why. So basically, I when I was recording this, I hadn't long... Um, before sort of checked out all of the new objects which came with this pack. So I'm building, 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 and then an item pops out and I'm like, oh my goodness, that would look absolutely perfect in a certain room. So I have to jump back into the room and place it down before I forget and before I lose it. <laughs> um, so when I was building this, there were so many times when I would be decorating one room and then I would see this awesome object and then just have to move away. Like there is a good example. I'm trying to decorate that wall in the dining room and the pendant, which came with the new pack, I'm like, oh my goodness, that would look so cute in the kitchen. So I had to go and put it in the kitchen. And it happens a lot with this build. So apologies for the camera being slightly all over the place because yeah, I mean, when I was sitting down and editing this footage, I kind of felt like this is so jumpy and like crazy, honestly. Anyway, so apologies for that. <laughs> But we are just working on this very small bathroom now and like I said, um, I did want to have a bathroom downstairs because especially when you're building homes for larger families, having just one bathroom is a little bit of a nightmare because the sims bladders, at least my sim bladders, empty so blooming fast. It's like they're either always needing to pee or always needing to like sleep and it's a little bit annoying having to queue for the toilet or when you click on the toilet, you're like, oh no, can't use this one because a certain sim's already gone in there. So I felt like it was so necessary to have a second bathroom in this build. And now we are upstairs, just working out the floor plan. The upstairs floor plan took me a lot less time than the downstairs. I kind of feel like by the time I got to doing the upstairs, I had more of an idea of what I was doing. I was definitely more comfortable in my building and uh, furnishing stage I this is actually my first build in quite a long time that I've finished from that I've completed from start to finish a lot of my builds at the moment are half finished which is super annoying but I'm hoping now that I've done this one I can get back to doing the others and I feel like I've got that kind of get up and go to, to complete them so that's good we are working on the master room of this house right now and I love how this room turned out I am such a fan of the colour schemes, like the kind of beige and the green. They just work so well together and I had space in this uh, bedroom to place a small nursery as well, which I'm really pleased I was able to do. Now, I wouldn't necessarily um, suggest that you have more than two children in this build. It's not incredibly big. Um, we are now just doing, just creating the child's bedroom and I did go for the bunk bed. Um, I was gonna place a bed underneath, but I decided to take it out and put a desk space under there instead. However, if you did want to move your Sims into this house, um, just a couple and then raise your family organically rather than creating them in cast, um, and you want to have more than one child, 
I would definitely recommend taking that desk space out and putting a second bed, either a toddler bed or another child's bed in there and um, yeah, because you've got the desk downstairs which you can use, like the children can use and there's obviously space uh, at the kitchen table for them to do their homework as well so it's not the end of the world if you want to get rid of this desk space. Um, but I did include, you know, all of the necessary items to be able to have like toddlers and children. Having said that, I didn't put a high chair in this build and I also don't think I put a potty. So scratch what I just said. <laughs> Perhaps when I upload this to the gallery, because it's it's not on the gallery at the time of voice recording this build, um, when I release it on YouTube, it will be on the gallery. So maybe I'll just pop in there after I've done this voiceover and add a potty and a high chair. I think I'll do that just to give you guys the option to be able to have toddlers in this build. Because like I said, the animations for toddlers with this game pack are just absolutely adorable. Like they're the cutest thing, so. I think I'll do that. <laughs> so now we're back in the parents room and again I'm just sort of trying to fit all the furniture that I needed in this build. Um, I really wanted to use this dark furniture which came with the parenthood pack but I just couldn't really get it to work. It was a bit too big so I do swap that out a bit later and choose the the new drawers that came with the uh, the new pack. But here we are just working on that little nursery area. So there's the crib. I also made a makeshift changing area for the baby. Added some uh, decor items like the bottled of milk, bottles of milk and the nappies or diapers if you're in the uh, US <laughs> and a little teddy bear there for some, uh, for some decor. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's super cute and it's just really cozy and it just goes really well like I'm so happy with how this room turned out and here I'm just placing some artwork on that wall just to give it a bit more interesting a bit a bit more of an interesting feature I love that painting which came with the most recent update it's absolutely gorgeous um, and I just had to use it in this build so really pleased that I put that in and uh, that's pretty much it for this room I just add a few more decorated decorative objects including a rug and a side chair because I felt like well my parents have an armchair in their bedroom and usually it's just for like holding clothes that's yet to be ironed so I guess that idea from them came in this build and I just shoved the armchair there it's also a really good space filler so that's a pro tip for you guys and girls out there. <laughs> um, I did also put down the new cross stitching um, which came with the new pack. It's one of the new hobbies that your sims can do together. And I also put the knitting box as well because I felt like if you're playing in this house um, and you're going to have generations living in this build, which I definitely I'm gonna try to do. I felt like it would be so cute to have your elder sims just sit by the fire and do some knitting. <laughs> so I'm just going into the into the different rooms now and adding some more decorative objects on the walls before we go outside again and put some more objects in the the garden. So I put down a barbecue area and some seating for your sims so they can enjoy the summer evenings, have a barbecue outside. I mean that's not typically something that we do in the U in the UK mostly because you can never like depend on the weather in this country like in the morning it can be beautiful blue skies and not a cloud to be seen for miles and then by the afternoon it could be absolutely chucking it down and that's kind of what we've grown to expect with the British weather it's so temperamental you can't plan outside events in the months between June and September because you just don't know what the weather's going to be like from day to day. So I took a chance in this game by putting down the uh, the table there with the chairs. But you know what? It's The Sims. There are mods. We can cheat the weather. It'll be fine. <laughs> So this is the end of the video, screenshots are coming up. I really hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up, subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you next time. Bye!